Hello and welcome to Train Sim TV. It's our very first Train Sim World 5 video. And what better way to start off by taking a look on the West Coast Valley South route. It's not a first look, as you've probably seen. We've been doing some streams recently uh, in during the week. I'll say the week, the weekend. Um, so we have actually looked at all three new routes that come with TSW5. Um, time of this video going out is still under the early access um, period. However, um, the day after this video goes live, it is going into official full release um, and do remember guys if you're not interested in buying the deluxe or any of that jazz you just want to get the core don't forget core is free from the 17th of september till the 17th of october um even if you don't install it claim it honestly claim it because if you if you don't and then you miss it you'll be you'll be kicking yourself because you have to pay so that's that out of the way i will keep plugging that during the month uh, apologies also um, for the lack of videos. It's been an absolute hectic period with work. Um, I'm managing just to get a video out today for you. Uh, I'm going to try and get a few more though, um, sort of a bit closer together. But today, as I say, West Coast for nice South, London, Euston to Milton Keynes. As you can say, we've already done about 200 miles on this route in a few services. So I'm, uh, I'm quite equipped into it now. Uh, we're going to take a drive with the Class. 390 Pendolino for this one, and we're going to use one of the creator scrub liveries that I've downloaded. Um, and that being, um, the I'm going to go with the climate change one because I thought this was a really nice job. Uh, if I remember correctly, this is done by the train fan on Craig's Club. Uh, so we're going to pick um, a run that's relatively quick. They're all quite quick, these ones, these are all fast runs, uh, just so we can have a quick. Uh, blast down. Uh, I'm going to have a blast. Uh, we'll have a blast to London Euston, I think. So we will go with a Manchester Piccadilly to London Euston. Starting Milton Keynes. Into custom weather. Stick it in July. I've got God mode, um, so I can tweak the weather to suit. <clears throat> So we know the caveats with this route, the, the timetable is not to its full potential of what it could have been, um, so we're not going to go too much into that. But with the drives that I've had and done on this, overall, generally I am still impressed. The route's lovely. The visuals on the route are not bad at all, um, to be perfectly honest with you. But don't let uh, that scare you off. Right. Let's just get this thing set up. Doors open. We need some lights on. Uh, daytime running. It's not just the new routes that come with this as well. There's a lot of new core features, as you can see here. One of them is the uh, the enhanced map, which is really an absolute godsend. All sorts of stuff on there. You've got a, a legend chart as well. You can toggle the labels on and off if you don't want to see them on there, but they do actually disappear when you zoom out so far. Um, we've got spawn points that you can actually hop to and all that now. Signals have all got dates onto them. But there's a lot of new stuff and... There's a bit of a bug at me with the uh, the player train, but the AI does um, tell you what they are. It's really nice. If you ever wonder what that... Oh, that looked like an interesting working. What was that? You can go and have a look over it, and you can find out, and you can go and drive that working. Delivery. Creative Club. Climate change. It's COP26. Um, livery this was. It's very nice. Very nice job what's been done on this. Named Opportunity. The Pendo itself is very nice as well. The only thing with the uh, livery is it's not got the Avanti brand on the uh, under the nose there, but I'm not so close. Class 350 comes with the standard version of the route. The Pendolino itself is a um, deluxe item. However, you can buy the Pendolino separately. Well, 
Don't quote me on the price. I think it was something quite cheap as well. I don't think it was really expensive for Pendle, you know. Straight through to London Houston, it's a 44 mile trip. Let's get this thing shifted. We'll have a look in the Pendolino itself when we get to London Houston as well. Um, but on this run, we're just going to take in the general scenery and have an enjoyable trip, really. It's missing out which league wire here and there. Some weirdness going on here, which I did notice on a previous run I did. Not quite sure what's going on there. Some god mode, so we'll pop a little bit of uh, a bit of cloud into there. To it, do recommend god mode if you've uh, not played with it before. It is PC only, um, so just bear that in mind. It's not a mod for consoles. Loving the detail in this cab, though, very nice. Speed set as well, that all works. Dimmers on the lights there. The lights. I'm not sure if the selective door works, to be honest with you. So this is the tilting train, you can always see it's tilted. Catching up on the uh, the 350 there. It was approaching Bletchley. Bletchley low level. <clears throat> I'm not going to go through prices for the game because uh, that's just, yeah, you can go and find that out for yourselves uh, through Steam. Not put me sitting here to explain all that to you. That's probably been exhausted about 9,000 times over by DTG and everyone else that's streamed it and done videos between me. the early access going live and now and all the run up. I won't bore you with that jargon. I'll just bore you with my me, me usual jargon and dulcet tones. But no, the, the, the general route is very nice and the scenery is very nice and the clutter. The, the route's got decent clutter. Those, uh, no, it's a lot of track cables troughing and that, which is quite rare for a route, really. <laughs> you don't see many routes with cable chunking, so I was quite blown away. All the trackside lights there at the junction. But workmen. Actually, they do light up at night. The general foliage is good, there's plenty of it. Not really sparse at all. All sorts of retaining walls going on, lots of graffiti under the bridges as you would expect. Um, a good variety in bridges as well. The OHLE is decent. Um, it has the right feel for the area. I'm not sure if it's 100% perfect and accurate. I'm not really fussed. As long as it gives me that general feel of the uh, sort of area that, that it's meant to represent, I'm happy at the end of the day. Some people will be like, oh my god, that piece is wrong and that does that and that shouldn't be doing that and that. I not care less. <laughs> as long as it looks alright and it sort of does what it's meant to do in the, on the tin, I'm, yeah, that's a, it's good for me. There's a couple of oddities in some areas where the sort of central wire that goes between the top and the bottom sort of that is diagonal. That's a bit of a weird one, but I don't know what caused that. It's not everywhere, but this looks like it's alright here, but in some yards it seems to do it. So 125 miles per hour you're going to get out of this Pendolino uh, Class 390 uh, unit. 
it's in the uh, original livery that comes with the route is Avanti, so it's the original Avanti livery. Just I've been playing with um, Creators Club. I've got, I've got this one, I've got the Pride livery that's out. Both of them are really good. Um, there's a fantastic Virgin Trains one out there which I've been driving around doing, it's absolutely superb. Um, I'm amazed at the, the, the level of detail with the Creators Club liveries that are quite so quick. Really, really decent. Strange oddity with the freight, everything's container trained. Um, God knows why there's nothing else. But comes with a different livery, Class 66, which is nice. But a DB red one. However, badly, tail lights still appear on the rear. I wish we could have had that fixed. It would be nice to see that fixed one day, but uh, currently it's uh, broken. So uh, yeah, looking generally gory. This is what I mean with the wires. They see here, everything's all like sort of slanted. It shouldn't be. It should be upright. So God knows what's happened to that. I suppose when you're driving straight on, it doesn't really look odd. Maybe something's gone wrong while I've been laying it. It'd be quite a big job to re go through all that and relay it all. But... Yeah. This is oh. Leighton Buzzard. But you'll also know I've got a mod which puts branding back on the signs. So I will put a link for uh, you guys in the description if you've not seen that. Again, it's a PC only mod, unfortunately. It's, uh, it's well worth grabbing. Because the, the signs without that look really stupid. The rule, all the text is like shunted to one side, so it looks just so out of place. Just daft. Unfortunately, it's, it's, the sad thing is that the route, uh, unfortunately, didn't get the branding through the licensing. Uh, I think from what it looked like, the very last minute, sadly, so... Yeah. There's no official brand for the 350 um, in a, in a reskin, or like a mod, but... There is on the Creators Club, so you can grab console or PC or whatever you, you're playing on. You can grab that in Creators Club at least. So there is something you can do. And it's a decent, it's a decent uh, job actually, which will no doubt feature as a video. But yeah, going back into the cab itself, like I said, the the, the, the detail, the level of detail in this thing is fantastic. I presume you can open the nose of the plus as well. I should try this. Oh, yeah, look at that. Oh, fire. Well, some right detail in there, isn't there? I'd love to see a class 57. Look at this. Using dragging. Watch it, won't it? That's ace. I always remember going um, going on class fifty seven drags with, um, with the three ninety years and years ago, and always watching them trying to struggle getting that hatch shut because they never would just shut perfectly. They, they were really really open, and, like always just getting jammed and put all like seas up or whatever, and they could never get them open or shut. Watching a Class 57 cup up in that as well, and that, watching the cup up come down, really, really worth going to watch. Did a few runs on them between um, like Crew and Liverpool and around the, the, the Wolverhampton area as well. But yeah, that would be quite a nice uh, DLC, I think. If ever there was one 
you'd like to see. Buying closures and stuff like that. Electrics had to be turned off, let's get the Thunderbird out. So, speed set, pop it into full, press the button, it should stay where it is. Or around about. So there's some other bits and pieces with the route, you can do route hopping now, you can route hop between um, the underground route. So you can hop there and change along. You can essentially travel quite, quite a distance, you can get across a lot of routes on this now. For example with the San Bernardino route, you can do Antelope, San Bernardino and Cajon Pass. So you could actually do about an 8 hour drive if you uh, wanted to do so. Uh, I think this is Tring. Just did a, uh, a trip to Tring on my stream from Houston with a 350, which was a nice run. Uh, You'd watch that, a little scene. Again, looking, just look at the visuals here. Like you've got cable trunking, like raised stuff as well. It's not just normal on the track, on track like you've got the raised stuff. There's fences uh, for the most part. I think there might be a few areas maybe some bits missing, but for the most part, everything seems to be well covered. Um, Look along a lot of areas as well, you'll see like there's some decent clutter mobbed around, um, bags of gravel and all that stuff, like skips and stuff like, like where, like where track access areas and stuff are, there's a lot of stuff like that there knocking around. Maybe we've got huts and transformers and bits and bobs. Got your mile post markers. It generally has had a decent treatment to it. Performance wise is good. That post of San Bernardino, which I drove on the stream, it was lagging like an absolute pig. Very worrying to be honest. I don't know why it was lagging because there should be no need for it to lag like that. I do feel like there's something in the background of TSW that's causing a lot of lag. Um, but yeah, I'll just wait and see what comes of that. If anything ever comes of it or if it gets fixed. But at the minute it's not too bad. I've done I think I've done about six or seven drives in this route now and I haven't not bored at all. It's good. Burke instead. It's a shame it didn't get a bit further on an extension, maybe like to Northampton. Um, another one I, I think would have been quite nice for some would have been the St Albans City Branch. The City Branch or Abbey, Abbey Branch, whatever you call it. The one from Watford. Uh, that would have been a nice little extension just to have a little bit of a shuttle back and forth with the, uh, with the unit. I think they do like a changeover in the afternoon or the midday. Would have had a little bit extra gameplay just for a small few miles. The, the upside is you get the DC lines. So you, you can essentially, you do essentially have that um, on there as well. I think that's the Line S, um, now called the Line S uh, line. That's what Goblin got the suffrage yet. So that in itself is its own little network. So you said you do get sort of like two routes you can do. There's a lot of playability in this route. It's not just jumping a pendo and there, done. You've got like, the 350 there's, there's fast services, there's slow services, there's some that do take about an hour and 10 to 15 minutes, maybe a little bit longer. If you do an all station stopper, Pendo runs I think sort of generally about 30-35 minutes, depends if it's stopping or not. But this one isn't stopping so it's about 35 minutes all in. But I'd say there's a good variety. You've also got the class 377 Southern, that does a, a small snippet of a run between the uh, sort of like uh, Wilsdon area to um, Watford and you've also got obviously class 66 and the Bakerloo for a bit of a run as well basically that's between uh, Queen's Park and Harrow and Wilsdon so there's, there's a good variety in this
basically, I don't think you'd be bored on this. Even with the state of the timetable. Still plenty to do. And it's not quiet, there's trains, we're past trains and we've seen stuff. We've seen 350s, we've seen 66s, we're pendling now. The only bit where it gets a little bit on the quiet side is um, when you come to um, run down where like the 710s are and stuff like that. It just gets a little bit on the quiet side down there because there's not as many where as there should be. Just fingers crossed that someone at some point uh, fixes it. It doesn't just get left and forgotten. That would be quite sad, to be honest. Especially with it being a flag, flagship call route, it's uh, one that's highly requested. Time should be set aside to sort them out, sort the issues, definitely. I actually did a trip down here um, in February. We were staying at Apsley, so we uh, bought a 350 from there down to Euston. So we actually had, had done this line early in the year. I spent a few evenings at Apsley Station as well, watching stuff go through all the crates and stuff, and videoing bits and bobs. Should probably try and put the footage together and uh, maybe a little uh, clip of everything. And, uh, I can find all the footage, I should pretty soon I still have. Oh, no, you're not. That's me, that I'm not taking effect of this thing. It's basically it's the task. You can intervene with that, you can press the reset. We're just passing under the, uh, the M25, so we are now essentially, we are in the south. Will we see a 377? Maybe, maybe not. More for probably we'll see a 710. Let's see it. There we go. We'll just sit there, we can watch it lean into the bend. So oh, cool to watch it clean for the bend. You see here lots of clutter, lots of detail, all the retaining walls. Good round feel about uh, how it is and that. I like it. You'll get plenty of enjoyment on streams. Folder as well, the Frankfurt folder route, really, really enjoyable. We drove that on stream um, the other night. Yeah, 377. <coughs> Which runs on the electric as well, so on the OHL rather than the third rail. You actually get uh, dual voltage out of that.
being set back on. Oh, so you guys, have you got any thoughts and queries or anything like that you want to put in there or any questions? Happy to answer stuff of what I can answer and what I know about things, like the route and that. Or just my thoughts as well, aren't they? Any questions I'll, I'll, I can express my thoughts to you. It's something I've not covered in the video. There's a couple of areas where it's got double lady restaurants, it's a bit weird. I'll be sure what happened. Well, I know why it happened because they've had it in twice, but I don't know why they've had it in twice. line which has track on it because if you go under the Chilton routes the two Chilton lines there's no bloody track <laughs> I don't know why they haven't added the track at the Chilton stuff the bridges are there but there's just no track very weird odd choice It's a screenshot in. Whether I use these as fun uh, thumbnails, I don't know. <clears throat> Sad. Uh, where more central? So at the moment we are actually travelling on some what was the Bakerloo line route. Um, bits have been done to it, There's, there has been some odd bits and pieces done to it uh, here and there. Some bits haven't really seen much of a touch up or not. Some areas are a bit more noticeable than others where there's not really any foliage like here it's for example, it's just a bit basic. Just some extra grass and that would have uh, helped it a bit further. That's the sander, right? Come on. At least it doesn't like lob the brakes on for you. I hated, I hated taps on TS Classic. I really did. I can demonstrate that these uh, safe systems actually do work. Shoot trend. Three miles out. Apparently, it takes ten minutes. I feel like that might be a bit of a lie.
So we've just gone past Queen's Park, um, so we're now back into new scenery, which you'll see the difference again. So basically between Queen's Park and Harrow and Lundston is the uh, original stuff. I don't envy them to have uh, built this, this is quite a complex area of route. Oh, there's a 710 as well. We've got a full house. We've seen all the stock. These apartments on the right side are very, very uh, brutalist architecture. Definitely speeding now. Didn't get any tasks on these though, no uh, alarms at the time. Long, uh, long tunnels around here that takes up to Camden where the junctions all the flyover tunnels and stuff are is it Primrose Hill I think it is but it's a junction that goes off towards the North London line a lot of freight uses that used to be a station years ago it's now shut which that takes off somewhere around here I think it goes off here, yeah, it goes off here. There used to be a station there. I think technically in real, real life there's actually still old platforms there, but they've been omitted. You can't really go down there anyway. It's Camden uh, sidings. I do like the approach in Houston. Even the, like the departure coming out of Houston is quite cool though, because you, know, you could even just go straight out, you could nip under and go up on one side and come out on the other side, like here you can see the tracks on the right and there's some on the left. The tracks go under here as well and come back out. You never quite know which way you're going to go. Uh, platform 15 goes on this one. We definitely are a little bit early. The BT tower just over there on the right then. Well, on the right side is where they're building HS2 um, stations. Right hand side there, you've got the sidings as well. But um, can basically take that all the all the spoil and stuff away. It brings any like stuff in. Not sure how often that gets used, but uh, yeah. So yeah, uh, a little bit uh, jittery around here, isn't it? Uh, that's that. There is BT Tower. Look. Not sure whether the light bait has got anything to do without that performance on this because it's very uh, FPS intense. I'm not overly keen on it either. It makes the cabs go really, really stupidly bright. Yeah, I've been done. We're stopping here, apparently.
been done by a tier um, over speeding ramp. Wasn't aware that actually there's any working ones, isn't it? Christ almighty. Don't really want to stop that because I'm halfway out of the station. It hasn't gone really well, this, has it? A bit of a pig's ear. One thing I've noticed as well, there's no end of train lines. You know, the signal for the little red signal. None of that. Which is a bit bizarre. Right, whilst uh, that's happening, let's have a quick look through the train, so it's going to be a quick tour. Even though it's a little bit on the stuck side. Christ almighty. There we go. Like these. You'd be happy to know there's no toilet working. So do hold it in. These are the refurbished sets, I believe, as well, because they've got the um the wireless charging on the desktop, the USB ports and all that. So these are these are based on the refurbished set. Cool funky purple light in there. So laggy. You go to the other end. There is actually a kitchen area here. Yeah, look like it's not so bad. Pumping's tanky. Bit of D3 warrior, that's one of the platforms. The little robots are uh, cool as well, the little drone thing, that little parcel thing. It's really stuttery. I do hope it gets sorted. Extra long run as well, because it's an 11 car set, of course. Down to first class. The difference between first class, they got blue seats and armrests and black tables opposed to the white ones and the uh, standard. Here's the kitchen area, the catering car section of the car. Um, hobs and stuff. The microwave and all that jazz. Obviously, the drinks and coffee. Ovens. And again, same as the event storage area and Room. Well, that's where the ramp is. Look, but yeah, get back in there and shut the doors and round things off there. But no, I hope you've enjoyed uh, this look into well, the West Coast main line there, just with the Pendolino itself. I'm gonna end this bit. We'll go back into the screen, but no, um, remember, do go and get the free copy if you're not interested in buying anything else. If you've got Trinity World already, any of the old stuff, it'll transfer onto TSW5. So even if you just get the free core, you get the train sensor, all your content comes along. And when um, any, um, obviously, anything services for the Great Western Express remaster. If you've already got that, you'll get the remaster for free. So you want to be across to five because that's where it comes. It's going to be on, I think, five. I don't think it's going to work on any of us, from what I'm aware. But uh, yeah, until until next time, we will uh, do another video. We'll do some other stuff. So just to get this one out there, thank you very much for watching, guys. Take it easy. Links in the description for any of the bits and pieces I've mentioned highlighted as well. So yeah, until the next one, bye for now.